Hey, what's up, YouTube land? It's your boy, Eddie Hill, the White Oak, Pennsylvanian toy collector, and today we'll be reviewing the 1980s Transformers Generation 1 Shrapnel. Yeah, I finally got my second G1 Insecticon, and he looks very nice, and he'll be going straight on my shelf for sure, and all I gotta do is track me down a kickback to complete my collection. But before we get on to reviewing this figure, we're gonna talk about Shrapnel. Shrapnel is one of the 1980s G1 Insecticons, and what they do is they eat wood or anything to create energon in their stomachs, so that's a little bit of a bio on Shrapnel. But now that we're done with the bio, let's look at Shrapnel himself. He rolls very well. Or an Insecticon, I'll say so myself. He is missing one part down here, but otherwise he's 100% complete. Well, 99% complete. But now we're going to get on to comparison. You know, I love doing comparisons. Here is the 1980s Shrapnel next to his Generation 1 counterpart. It's Bombshell. And they look good together. I do say so myself. Let's get some other comparisons right next to them. Here is the 1980s Shockwave. Generation 1 Constructicon Bone Crusher. Mix. We got good old Mix Master. Generation 1 Constructicon. Bone Crusher. Generation 1 Constructicon. Long Haul. Generation 2 Constructicon. And Skullgrin's Pretender. I don't have the Pretender shell to go with it. And G1 Astro Train. But now we're going to get on to Transforming Shrapnel. Which is very simple. Fold this in. Pull the legs down. Flip out the feet. Like so. Rotate the feet, flip these down, and there you got Generation 1 Shrapnel in his robot mode. And he looks pretty cool. And you're probably wondering, why is his eye painted? Well, you know me, I have to be accurate to the Generation 1 show, so I painted his eyes like I did for Bombshell Red. But look at that robot, it's so cool. He is missing an Insecticon, Septicon Insignia, but other than that, he's pretty much all there. And his feet move due to the transformation. Why not? It's a G1 toy. But now for comparisons in robot mode. We'll compare him next to his other Generation 1 Insecticon. Bombshell. And here we got the second member of the Generation 1 Insecticons. And they look good together. Now for a comparison with good old Astro Train, which I have to transform them off camera because I pulled them off to the side. So I can get his, uh, some self-transform. These 1980s Transformers figures are real easy to transform, a lot of fun, and a throwback to figures from yesterday's. Of course, I wasn't born in the 1980s, but when I got my hands on my first one at Steel City Con, I just loved them after that moment. So now here is Generation 1 Trapnel next to Astro Train. And, of course, with the other Constructicons. 
Here is Scavenger from the Constructicons in the 1980s next to Bombshell. Mixmaster from Generation 1 Constructicon. So yeah, I got this memorizing my figures' names now pretty good, huh? So I can name these 1980s toys. Because I've got a photographic memory. Okay, we almost got Generation 2 Long Haul transformed. But here's Generation 2 Long Haul next to Shrapnel. And of course, G1 Bone Crusher, which I got his transformation memorized. Yeah, so I got these transformations memorized by heart. Which is a real point in reviewing toys. You gotta remember, memorize all the figures you've collected over the years. Which is the main part of reviewing. I gotta transform his feet, and he's good for comparison. So here is Bone Crusher next to Shrapnel. In the exact same size scale. Huh, sorry, I got a dry throat, so... It's pretty much tricky to do that one reviewing. And now I've got Generation 1 Pretender Skullgren next to Shrapnel. Close enough scale. And now for the big guy. Generation 1 G1 Shockwave. Which I have in my collection for a long time. And it was one of my personal favorite figures I found. And I was so stoked to find this guy. But here is the 1980s Generation 1 Shockwave. If I can get him to stand. Come on, Shockwave. Got to lean him up, up against something. He does not want to stand up. And I just got to pull his legs down with shrapnel. He's just not one to stand up for me today. But here we have the 1980s Generation 1 Shockwave next to shrapnel. I still want to track down more of these. These are so much fun to transform and display. But before we end this video, we are going to do a group shot with all the Transformers Generation 1 Decepticons I own. Here is the 1980s. Shrapnel and Shockwave and Bombshell next to each other. 1980s Bone Crusher. If I can get him to stand. There we go. He's standing. Good. 1980s Skull Grin. Oh, I forgot about one other Decepticon I own. Almost forgot about him. My cassette combiner. I'll put him in the comparison since I forgot about showing him off. If I can get him to work for me properly. Come on, transform you, big guy. Okay, there he is. Next to Shrapnel. And Skull Grin and Bombshell. So here is Mixmaster. And Long Haul. And Astro Train. And of course, good old Scab Scrapper. But yeah, are these 1980s Decepticons worth picking up? Yes. They are a lot of fun to transform. And if you can get your hands on these guys, they're worth the money. I'm just so glad to be adding more of these to my collection. I love these guys so much. They're so much fun. And I love telling the story of each character here on my channel. And you're probably wondering how many of these Decepticons Generation 1 do I own this year? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten 
Generation 1 Decepticons. And I will plan to hunt down some more of these because they are so much fun. And now, this is Eddie Hill. Moving on. And rock on and rock out, YouTube land.